Welcome into the Mystery Fifth Hour now as we get going. Always brought to you by the great folks at McCurry Van and Car Rental. They've got locations in Athens, Muscle Shoals, now open in Tuscaloosa, Coleman, Huntsville, even Meridian, Mississippi, as you watch us all over the Southeast. Mystery Fifth Hour, away from our main live show, is our opportunity to talk about a topic that maybe we never get to on the show, including today. Stories we've never told on the air, or maybe you did a long time ago and you have forgotten them. Taylor Korn, Emily Grace McWhorter, Lance Taylor, Jim Dunaway, and Rob. Rockstar are participating in the Mystery Fifth Hour today. All right. Crazy stories that we may or may not know about each other. Who wants to go first? Ladies first, LT, or I should got, you start us off? Rockstar? Rocky, yeah. Let's let, let Rocky start. Rocky, I'm do trying it. I'm trying to think of how I can make this. Is it going to sh- make me sad? Oh, no, no, no. It's not, <laughs> it's not a bullying one. Okay. I got a lot of those. Uh, so I'm playing a gig. I, this, I can't even think of the year. I would say 2009. Let's just say 2009, 2010. I'm playing a gig. Um... And a lady approaches me afterwards. We talk, nothing, nothing big. Uh, I go home. Two, one or two days later, I get a Facebook message, messenger thing, asking like, you know, it was, it was nice meeting you, all that stuff. And then she would just talk back and forth. I was like texting through Facebook Messenger, and I saw on her profile she had pictures of kids. So obviously she had kids. And she said, "Would it surprise you? Like, I, I, I really appreciate music. Would it surprise you if I?" told you i played drums and i was like i don't care yeah that's great and i said so you have a drum set now and she said listen to me listen to me this is the quote no another loss in the divorce oh so i was like okay oh. so she's divorced um so we start you've always needed the drummer though yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> no, play drums. so we started hanging out talking out a lot and um hanging out or still talking still talking but never in I, person i would say we hung out once. Oh, that's in person. When was this? Yeah. When was this? 2009, 2010. Okay. Uh, this was two weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> and suddenly, I can't remember how it happened. Uh, this was, it, it was probably a three week period, almost a month period. And um, she had texted me again. This is, we were texting now and <laughs> said that something about her husband. Oh. Oh. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. whoa. Never saw, n- she never wore a ring. Ever, and I said, "Well, what are you talking about?" She said, "My husband. I got. I'm like my husband. So and so." I was like, "You never told me." You oh, is this man. a story I know? The person I know? I think you do. Yeah. Yeah. You, lost in the divorce was the key yeah. word here. And I brought that up, and she said, "No, no, no, no. That was I was a kid when I had drums, and that my <gasps> parents divorced. Oh my whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's when I lost. And I was like, "No." Now we're marching no. to wow. the beat of a different drum. And, uh, yeah, that's great. That's semantics. Yeah. Rocky. So, and then the history just that was awful for me like i've never felt i felt terrible i was like oh my god oh my god this guy's gonna come and try to kill me and i had no idea he even existed and stuff but it 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 just flared out i never saw her again i think she moved to another city but like just that finally got text work my i gotta go see my husband i'm just like whoa whoa back up so um can i just give you a hint on this just to make sure i confirm downtown homewood yes yep that is so, so he's better. He's he's leaving some parts out. The story is oh, yeah, pretty yeah, incredible. It's, yeah, it's a long. I'm, I'm trying to brief it as much as I can, but it goes on. It doesn't. The rest of the story doesn't involve me, but her history, crazy. So she was like a serial. Well, I, I don't think I'm the only one. She was yeah, I knew. We, I knew one of her good friends, and she ran pretty hard. Yeah, wow. yeah. we is. We did some research on this recently or months ago, but yeah, I think so. Yes. yes. Okay. I think I told Taylor yeah. about it. Yeah. I don't think I know. I don't think I know. And she did move. I haven't seen her forever. I think she got. She did get divorced. Yeah. And then I think she, <laughs> that was inevitable. Yeah. She moved away, and then I think she got remarried, and then I disappeared. Uh-oh. She was casting a, lo- a, a wide net. Uh, I don't know how you guys grew up. Now, back in the early '90s, when I was single, I uh, would go to the Daytona 500, and it was Speed Week. So for eight days, uh, and this is a, this is not my story. This is off a rock star story. I made out with a girl down there two nights in a row in oh, my yeah. single days. In Daytona? This was in Daytona. You need and, a couple of shots after that. Hey, and like like she knew that I, where I worked in television, where I worked, I knew nothing about her. And like six weeks, seven weeks later, I got a letter, a letter. This is how, you know, early 90s before cell phones. Got a letter that says, uh, since I've been back home, it's hard for me to not think about you and, oh, and really kiss my father. I mean, oh, my, 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 uh, my husband. I like that. Your other one's better. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, wow. And to kiss my husband. She's got quite the catalog. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, why, why were you making out with me at a bar? If you, but I never wrote her back Two or anything. Two in a row. <laughs> but I was always <laughs> fearful. Did y'all have the same meeting that, spot? That, you know, when you write letters, I mean, 
you, people can do research or whatever, scratch, you know, like detectives, and he could be on so her notepad. Did, did you give her a headshot? Uh, no, but I was there with TV guys, so she knew I was, I was in TV in Birmingham. And there, so did I'm sure you didn't mailed? brag about that at all, right? Oh, I mean, it was probably my go-to <laughs> line. Did it get mailed to the station, or how'd she it? It did. It got mailed to the station, wow. 100%. It why was, would, was crazy. Why include that in the letter, though? Yeah, like, all, she all can I, say all of that, but... Probably filling him out, like, if he was to respond, hey, not a big deal, let's meet up again, that yeah. was probably her go-to. Yeah. She, I, I heard the return address, which I never returned it, was from Indiana. Oh, so damn. she's down, down Dang. from the races. So were you thinking for a minute I might get shot or beaten with a bat? I didn't want any of that to happen. But to Rockstar's point, if you like, don't know, I, I mean, yeah. idea, how is it a foul on me? Oh, no yeah. idea what he looks like. I'm like somebody's out looking for me to beat my ass. But for her, after you said whatever you said. For her to be like, oh, no. No, no, you, yeah. mis- that's, you misunderstood. No, that's as a child. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, do not act like, like you didn't yeah. say that yeah, to try and. Because you told the story like, yeah, I lost it in a divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Never and once more. Now. Yeah. It was Never another more. loss. Yeah. Awful. Like, I felt. Well, who loses their drum kit in a divorce? Yeah, like, it's like kid. the dad's like, yeah. hey, it was, screw your mom and you. I'm yeah. taking That's the That's when the parents are trying to be nice cop, nice cop, because they want the kid to be on their side. But so. it, it's but the Tom's, your mom gets the symbols. But even it is, it's a, it's even an awkward adult story, too, if it's... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. The husband took was so mad, set. took Just my drums. Being so petty. <laughs> as a, as a judge, do you even play drums? Nope, but I paid for them. <laughs> That's right. That I bitch ain't having them. <laughs> See, anything but the drums. You get the kids. I get the drum set. Absolutely. Okay, McCurry, Van and Car Rental, all the great locations. Taylor and I can tell you, we love these folks. Great fleet in all the locations. We've rolled to some basketball games with them this year. If you're looking for some uh, rental cars, trucks, or vans, whatever going on. McCurry's the name to remember. Just look them up online. McCurry Van and Car Rental. They've got something for you. Who's got the next story? Let's go with one of the girls. I'm, uh, I'm have yours? Uh, texting a few sources to get oh. me a good one. Okay, go Taylor. Okay. Go Taylor. Mine could, I could tell this story for probably two and a half hours. I'm not going to do that. But, Thank you. Because <laughs> everyone wants to go home. It's Friday. But... In college, it was my sophomore, yeah. I think it was my sophomore year through either sophomore or junior year, but it lasted periodically throughout. One of my roommates had a stalker, a real, it was harassment, I think, according to the law. But it was this man that would, so I guess it's not really a story about me, but I was involved in it because it was my roommate. So not a student. A man. Well, but we you don't guys know. were students, so we were students. In we Auburn. don't. Yes, yeah. we don't know. Didn't you? Who, have, didn't you have voicemails from him or something? Ugh. Yes, I, I have all the videos vo- on my phone. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But he would. She literally couldn't use her phone because it was call after call after call after call. And if she blocked his number, it was like he was using one of those texting apps. Well, can you give you us can, a backstory on how they met or like? No, we don't know who he is. We still don't know who so he is. So it's maybe he found her on social media and just started stalking her. Yeah, he he claimed that he was her dad's friend and he would leave her these voicemails Awkward anyway and <laughs> he would leave her these voicemails but like he knew where we lived he knew like all of these really scary details about it and so we went to our the apartment complex that we lived in at the time and there were gates so all in all of our cars we had like a little thing that opened the gate typically during the day they stayed open and then at night they would close them we were like hey do y'all mind keeping these locked you know this is what we've got going on and we were i mean we went to the police station probably a different one in auburn probably every day i mean i was about to i wanted to leave i was like this is freaky because he would the police were at our apartment because they said call us if this happens whatever and then get him on the phone and we'll try and like like, track track him down and yeah and get him to meet up at least because he kept saying like i'm coming there i'm coming there like if you don't answer you're coming with me all this freaky stuff and um so they said you know we're gonna come you answer his phone call while we're in there. Then when he's talking, you mute it. We'll tell you what to say. We'll try and get him to where, whatever. And he wasn't saying anything. He hung up the phone. And then when the police left our apartment complex, he texted her and was like, stop trying to get me in trouble. All this stuff. So we were like, is he? Oh, he can see us. Yeah, we were like, what is going on? It was the scariest thing. It ended up, they were like, they were trying to get her to get a new phone, get a new phone number, all this stuff. It ended up, getting less uh frequent but he would randomly text her like happy thanksgiving i'm still here all this stuff. it's it I'm was still terrifying. here is like a freaking horror movie you sure yeah. one, like an inside job like you're dating some guy that it's got a 
One of his good buddies is a creep that you really didn't realize, and so he knew all the information you guys the were The voice, providing. I'll play y'all some of the videos of his voicemails and just him on the phone after this. It is a man. Is like, it so is scary. a, he was saying very inappropriate things as well, which I'm not going to get into, oh, but. he did. I never heard that part of the story. Yeah, it's, but the text, I mean, it was, it was the most insane thing, but it was so scary because. So a friend of her father, and he was saying inappropriate well, things. Well, yeah, I, I don't think was, he was, was actually. Up. I okay. think he was just like saying, I know everything about if, you, basically. If you had to guess, would you say he has a criminal record? Um, he should, and it wouldn't surprise me if he did. It was, it, when I show it, the uh, voicemails, the videos of him talking will make you shiver. It was terrifying. But he never ended up breaking in, or Mm-mm. you never had an encounter anywhere at a bar or in, at a Not restaurant? Not that we know oh of, gosh. but my dad sent us, my dad, he's awesome, he sent us all of these security things, like, under all of our, because we all, we had our door into the apartment, and then we all had our own rooms. So he sent us these door stoppers and he was like, put these under your door to get in and it's an alarm. So when it stops, like it'll start, he sent us all of these security things. I mean, they, the people around us were very aware. Yeah, it was scary. Were you carrying mace, tasers? Yes. And like those things that you pull, I think we were talking about them the other day. A grenade? The, no, the, the baton, no. the little stick that extends. <laughs> no, those the things. It, yeah, it's you yeah. pull it and it just makes a horrible screeching. Oh yeah, noise. we're gonna do this yeah. at the Masters. Mm, no, we're not. Makes me like sweat. But um, but yeah, so we were prepared if he were to actually break in. I don't know what we would have done though, because it would have been five girls. But it was very scary, and we kept our door locked at all time. We had one of our friends started banging on the door one night. Didn't tell us that she was coming <gasps> over, so we weren't. And we all sprinted into the room that was furthest away. <laughs> And I started sobbing, crying. We were all so on edge all the time. I started crying, and I called my dad, and I was like, Dad, he's here, he's here. And then Caroline, one of my friends, was like, Taylor, open the door. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, Caroline, it's we were ridiculous. all just, like, You guys hiding. had to deal with that, though. The, I yeah. know, it is. For a long time, Did too. Caroline have a deep voice? Because you, your voice changed. No. It's, she, it's Caroline. Let me in. No, I was probably still <laughs> thinking I was a man. But, yeah, I won't get into all the details. That was already a long story. Well, but, yeah, I'm sorry so we that had a stalker. Happened. Yeah. Wow. But we're still safe. I'm sorry that happened. Wow. And they it's ended a, up getting married. It's crazy. Uh, it's a mystery <laughs> fifth hour brought to you by McCurry Van and Car Rental. Wonderful locations everywhere, including Meridian, Mississippi, Huntsville, Athens, Muscle Shoals, Coleman, and now open in Tuscaloosa. Perfect for vacations or if you need a car or van rental for anything, no better place to go than McCurry. Just go online. In fact, easy website, good website to look at, mccurryrentals.com, mccurryrentals.com. They bring us the mystery fifth hour. EG, you got one or you want to go to Lance? I want to go, uh, I have a few. Um, a few? <laughs> I have a few. Spill them. Let me see. Which one? I would, okay, this one's kind of funny. This is like a childhood story. It was the first time I punched someone. Okay. All right. And so there was this person in the neighborhood and I, I don't want to say his name because he was, he was a little interesting, to say the least. And he just loved to pick on people, okay? And Give for, him a Gatorade with vinegar, <laughs> salt, salt, and lime. Yeah. <laughs> so I was probably in like third grade maybe because I was in elementary school. And me and my brother Jake, we were cruising around the neighborhood on our bikes. And we, face, we, we come, we see him. And he's out on his bike as well. And he would call me a sea beast. What? A sea beast? A sea beast. S-E-A, like sea beast. And I had, Kraken. Yeah. A mermaid. <laughs> I had enough of it. And so he, we start chasing him on the bikes. Bike wars. And for, somehow we, were, we got stopped, right? And so we, we get off our bikes and I'm with my brother. And Jake is like telling him off, whatever. And I asked Jake if I could punch him. I don't know why I had to ask. And I remember the exact spot I was in, and he called me a sea beast again. And I <laughs> reared back, punched him, and he ran away. Where'd you punch him? So yeah, well, did did Jake put him in like in a, a full Nelson to like hold him up? No, for you? no, he just was like, hey, I don't understand why this kid didn't run away. You know, like he just because he didn't think there. you really were gonna punch him, probably. And so I also my mistake was I punched him in the chest, like in the neck, basically, yeah. not the face. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was the first time I punched someone, and that, that was called a sea beast. Throat punch can do more damage. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Chest or face may not hurt him, and but you could hit that trachea and I saw <laughs> dislocate his esophagus. He could die. <laughs> that didn't happen, done away, because I saw him years later at the pool, and he would sit on the edge of the pool, and he'd like get into like a little ball and just like head roll in. Oh, I see and that. And I was like, yeah, you haven't changed. I yourself. never did that. Weird. I never how, how, old, yeah. how old was you he when you saw it? him again? He was, he was older than me too. Not typically. Uh, he was, 
probably in high school, late high school, then run into him again. Turns out he decided to go to Georgia Southern, didn't go to school, worked at the local Walmart, ran to him in Belks with my mom. Wow. I know. So he went, he went down to Statesboro and worked at a Walmart? At a then Walmart. over to Auburn and yeah. became a stalker. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this might be the same guy. Because yeah. he kept, he did, he was like, where, so where do you live? Where do you live? I was like, I don't live. I you don't, don't, I don't I live. Know. I don't, I don't. I'm imagining yeah. y'all, y'all crossing paths on your bikes. Him calling you a sea beast and you being like, hey, Jake, can we have a word? No, yeah. Can I punch him? All right. And then it happened. A sea beast. I've never heard anybody call it a sea beast. I have yet to hear that again, too. Like, it was a one and done thing called this a sounds, sea beast. Do y'all remember the great milk commercials where... Uh, they, got they, milk? Yeah, if you got milk and they would drink milk and the scrawny guy would grow into this big muscular guy. I picture little EG and it's a milk commercial and this guy calls her a sea beast and she keeps drinking her milk and she keeps getting better looking. This <laughs> guy's this this guy's life's going downhill. Now he's at a Walmart yeah, and, and here comes the sea beast in. By, by the milk. way, that's in my vernacular now. Yeah. So, sea beast. I've sea never beast. Uh, shared that story, but I feel like that one needs to be in circulation. It's probably a minor league baseball team somewhere. It probably the is. Sea the sea beast. The sea beast. <laughs> McCurry Rental, McCurry Van and Car Rental brings you the mystery fifth hour um lt's got the story yeah that he is going to tell us here to wrap this thing up here uh, in just a second i think i've told all my stories i don't think i have anything you gotta hold uh, you gotta hold something close to the vest right i don't think i have any left that i that are, are worthy of the mystery fifth hour um i've got nothing that that fits this right now so let's get to the, the okay. biggest yeah one. i've got some that just they just haven't come out i'm not comfortable <laughs> with them coming out if they ever come out i don't know when what fashion they would, but this is one of those. Um, and so I got to be a little delicate. So I had a procedure done, and this is in the past, obviously. And so I was recovering from this procedure, and I get a text, and I'm in bed, and it was late night. It's probably midnight, one o'clock. And I checked the text, and it's like, just wanted to check on you. And again, I'm paraphrasing, just wanted to see how you're doing. And like it was, you know, an unidentified number I didn't know. And I just assumed it was somebody that had heard about this. And I was like, doing well and went into it a little bit. Uh, well, what are you up to tonight? Well, I'm obviously recovering. <laughs> right. Um, Stitches aren't healed yet. Yeah. <laughs> I say we get a drink. And again, I don't know who this is. So I find out who it is. And then the next thing I know, <laughs> this was somebody that was involved in the procedure. And I don't know how they got my number. I have no idea. That's off, probably off, uh, off yeah. your medical short chart. Yeah, what's that called? HIPAA. HIPAA. Yeah. HIPAA. Yeah. HIPAA. Yeah. Again, I don't want to get anybody in trouble here. But after that, then I start getting nudes. And I'm talking like graphic nudes. Mm. Like, are you sure you don't want to come over here? And I'm like, again, I was in bad shape. And I'm like, what in the hell? Like, I almost thought like the meds I'm on, like I'm imagining this. Yeah. And I shut it down pretty quickly. But then I still got a text a couple of days later. And same situation. And I... You know, finally, when I stopped responding, which know, was quickly, I, it got away from me. But it was one of the strangest things because I have no idea how they got my number. HIPAA. Yeah. And it's, then, your medical chart. It they, hangs at the end of your hospital bed. Some of the, some of the <laughs> yeah. pictures that were being sent, I was like, holy hell. Okay. Um, can you just tell me within the last five years? Uh, Procedure? Uh, yeah, I'll say within the last five years. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll give you more details. I was, was going to give you the when old, that light is gone. I was going to go ahead and tell you. I was going to give you the old tip of cap, tip of the cap. If it was after you waved the white flag years ago, uh, if, you, if the <laughs> nurses start calling you after that one, that's pretty impressive on your part. Well, I don't know if a nurse could visually <laughs> see if you've had a vasectomy. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about during that procedure. If she was assisting see, the oh, doc, oh, I got you. <laughs> and everybody's working under yeah. the hood, and she's <laughs> got you. to call you at that point. Yeah, that was Doctor yeah. Mills. That was a solo mission for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, gosh, that's a, that's, uh, it's a freaky impressive. story, wow. freaky yeah. story. Um, yeah. uh, we'll end with this real quickly. Um, you, you were all in fraternities, right? Sororities. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, we had uh, informal, did y'all ever do informal initiation where, I mean, you have your formal, wherever he's dressed we're, up. We're uh, bound by secrecy yeah. from, I'm, just, I'm not asking, I don't even for, remember. I'm not asking for details, but did y'all do anything informal fun, like during initiation process? Yeah. We, at well, so my sister's uh, grade actually got us in a lot of trouble. I think it was during initiation. Right. Oh, no, maybe that was during senior chapter. They had a little bit too much fun in a public area. Oh, okay. And um, <laughs> there were some calls made. That is what put us on probation. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, but after that, some of that. Your sister's fault? 
uh her grades fall wow. yeah well i mean we got we got off of it eventually but they made the that, pledges the, do something that got that got you guys in trouble no it oh, okay. was them they were just having fun like no one it wasn't hazing or anything yeah. okay. um but after that we didn't really get to do stuff that was organized by ad pi yeah. that to that extent Technically, this wasn't hazing, but it was portrayed during rush during initiation week like it it was a tradition, and it involved a goat, uh, and there'd been you know an old urban legend where occasionally goats and things have to happen. Oh, Dunaway will do it. Dunaway will do it. So we actually got a live goat uh, during informal initiation, and the pledges are blindfolded at this point. We're out in, deep into the woods. And we got a campfire going and we have a pickup truck where this live goat is in the back of the pickup truck with oh, some haze. Live it makes it any better. Yeah. <laughs> and then we and then we put the pledge in with the live goat and hand them a contraceptive saying they're like and we always say, Well, you know what to do with the goat. Well, every guy, you know, there was twenty two pledges, every guy says, Hell hell no, blah 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 and and we all laugh and they get them out of the truck. Except Not for, Evan. Except for one guy <laughs> from Backwoods, Alabama, started to unbuckle his pants. Uh-huh. We were like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're only kidding, dude. We're only kidding, dude. That was uh, that was our um, informal initiation. Were they sober? Tw- 20, uh, there was some drinking, but. Dude, is the goat uh, still in therapy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like they totally teased him. He didn't 20, get 20, yeah. 22, <laughs> guys, 22 guys, but only one of them went for the belt buckle. We were like, oh, no, no, no. We're only kidding, man. We're only joking. That was, is horrifying. Was oh, this one is. of the fraternity brothers that you uh, ended up telling him on his wedding night that his wife was basically uh, uh, having fun with all of the groomsmen or half uh, of his friends? Right? No, it wasn't on the wedding night. It was before the uh, wedding, but uh, it was I when I didn't get invited to the wedding. Yeah, I thought it was the night before the wedding, wait, right? Wait, no, no, wait, it wasn't wait, a very wait, night. Wait. No. Oh, have you guys not heard this no, story? No, no, oh, like, we can't talk about that. No. Oh, I thought you told it on the air. No, no, oh, no, sorry. no, no, oh, no, my. no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know about now that Now we did. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's ears perked up. No, no, no. McCurry, <laughs> Van and Car Rentals. If you ever need out of a sticky situation to get to that next destination, you can do it with our friends at McCurry. Uh, car and van rental, Tuscaloosa now, Muscle Shoals, Athens, Meridian, Huntsville, Coleman, and uh, all those great locations, McCurryRentals.com, McCurryRentals.com. Until next next time, so long, everybody.